Hey gang, what's going on? Welcome to an all new episode of Talking Vegas All Day with KA. I'm your host, KA, and on today's episode, um, I'm going to review uh, my hopes for the 2022 year in Las Vegas and then um, wrap up with some hopes that I have and predictions for 2023. So, hope you all are having a ho- happy holiday season. And before we go ahead and get started, uh, make sure you hit that like button. And if you enjoy the episode, hey, please comment. You know, we're talking about the algorithms on YouTube, but even more, click subscribe. Um, Love hearing from you guys. So I interact on social media as well. You can find me on Twitter at Vegas underscore K-A. And now on Instagram and Facebook as well um, at Talking Vegas All Day with K-A. And the show's available on Spotify and Apple as well. And we got a great show, but before we go ahead and get started, just a few things I also want to talk about as well. First, um, this year has been a great year for the show. Um, Last year at this time, um, my subs on YouTube and the pods was around 125 people. And um, at this point right now, I'm well over 300 people on all platforms as of this airing. And my goal for 200 uh, for 2023 is to get over 500 um, subscribers. So let's go ahead. And if you haven't subscribed yet on any of the podcasting or YouTube yet, uh, you know, hey, do me a favor. Um, don't ask for money or anything like that. Uh, go ahead and just click subscribe. Just let me know how I'm doing. And, 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 and you know, I, I tell people this all the time. Why did you start this channel? Um, you know, it's a passion project. I started this during the lockdowns of COVID when Vegas was locked down and couldn't go. And I like talking about Vegas. I love the history of Vegas. So I um, thought I'd create this. And uh, two years in, this has been a, a wonderful time for me. I know J.A. enjoys doing this. And uh, we have a lot of fun. So we hope you do as well. So let's go ahead and get started on an all-new episode of Talking Vegas with me, K.A. <laughs> So just to review some of the hopes uh, for 2022, uh, my first hope was that the Mirage would be saved. Uh, That is a fail because as of Monday, December 20th, the Hard Rock is now owned by the Mirage. So, yeah, and, um, you know, the Volcano will be gone to make way for a mini casino and um, a guitar tower as you guys have followed Vegas. And if you haven't Googled that, um, the Hard Rock Las Vegas, you'll see some of the designs. Um, basically, some things that came out last week were that, you know, this is going to be an 18-month transition plan. So if you haven't said goodbye to the Mirage yet, you still got some time. Um, and just a couple other things, you know, um, that the uh, Mirage won't, they're not sure yet, probably will be closed during transition. But, um, you know, you still got some time. So um, sketches look great, but again, Okay, I can't tell until we see the finished product in a couple years. So, again, if you got time, go say goodbye to the volcano because it will be gone. Number two, I had, I uh, hope, uh, I think this was Jay's as well. Uh, I hope that the MGM does not mess up Cosmo. Uh, that's a pass, um, but there's still time to fail, as I like to say. Uh, one of the things, uh, if you remember this last year around this time, there was that the uh, MGM did buy out the Mer- uh, Cosmo. Um, now, the hotel part is still being run by Marriott as of this recording. I know they're under contract till I believe then MGM will take over. Changes have been made and small when I've been there this three times this year. Um, they were nice. Um I mean, nothing really earth shattering. It's still the Cosmo um, as of September. So I haven't been back. I like the comps programs now with MGM going in. Uh, You know, my advice to MGM, not that they're listening, is, you know, it's the same Cosmo. Don't change what's not broken. I mean, maybe they'll update some of the restaurants that aren't doing well. And, but don't just go and put, like I think I said last year, like all these celebrity. I mean, I know there's a lot of celebrity stuff, but keep that high scale identity that Cosmo has. Keep that identity a little bit. And then um, 
Number three, I had Caesars and MGMs will at least uh, sell one more property. This is a semi-pass. I mean, Bally's became the horseshoe this year. Um, lots of room for improvement at that property, especially with the uh, Grand Bazaar shops. I'd like to see what they do with that. Um, I mean, that made a lot of sense. Now they're going to bring the World Series of Poker to the horseshoe. Um, you know, they're going to change it up. It'll, it will be still same structure. I don't see, you know, maybe some nice lineups. I've seen some things they're doing right now with like the arcade, the old sports book and a couple restaurants. So I'll be interested to see what they do there. Um, I, I think the other thing is that, you know, the Rio was sold, but Caesars continues to operate it. You know, it's just one of those property sales. I know the building what is it? I believe that when it was sold for half a billion, um, I think they're going to look at also with the Rio um, updating that. And, and again, again, guys, you know, I've said before, when we toured that place, it's a nice property. It just needs some loving um, to get back on there. So, again, that's a pass. I mean, you got two properties looking. Uh, number four, I think I had was the MLS Major League Soccer will come to Vegas. Um, that's a push, but it's leaning towards a fail. Um, kind of the two deals, I think one was the Vegas Knights ownership group. And I know they just bought a club and the Aston Villa ownership group. They kind of have a plan, but it's not really gone. Uh, I know Don Garber has highlighted that, you know, there's been some issues, obviously, with Vegas, the heat, the conditions. While it's favorable, he wants to get in there, the heat and conditions. You know, they really need, like, a retractable roof arena. And they're just having some hard times getting the financials down. Um, it looks like, and also, he said the MLS Cup state of the uh, address, that it sounds like it's going to be, and I've seen some reports, it sounds like it's going to be San Diego. So, Sad because I like to see Vegas uh, get an MLS club, but I get it. Um, and to be fair, it's going to, you know, maybe down the road they do the all-star game there or something like that. I don't think MLS is done with Vegas. I just think right now the opportunities aren't there. Um, Oakland A's will come to Vegas. That is a pass because it sounds like Oakland's staying in Oakland. If you remember last year at this time, the A's were kind of looking at Vegas as a potential moving spot. Oh, it doesn't mean that another team down the road will, you know, maybe come. I mean, I know they were talking about the Tropicana having a ballpark on the strip, which is, sounds like a cool idea. But again, I don't see that happening. Um, but you never know. But for right now, that's a pass. And uh, K.A. will go. My last one, number six, was K.A. will go to Vegas three times this year. Oh, uh, that's the pass. Um, yeah, made three trips this year. I mean, the first one was our annual Easter trip. That was a fun time. Then we went to um, there to see the Killers in April from a concert that was scheduled a year prior. And we were there for two days. And now I was out for a week in September. So, yeah, I had about two weeks out there in Vegas this year and, and uh, got to go to a lot of places, saw some new places, ate some places I've never been at. Uh, you can check the uh, episodes. Um, there's one, I think, in like springtime, early summer, we discussed our Easter trip. And then we had two here in the end of summer and middle of September. I discussed those other two trips. So if you want to hear my trip reports, go ahead and see them. Had a great time, though. So let's go ahead now and transition to my 23 hopes for 2023. Um, these are my predictions, whether or not they come true, who knows. But um, let's start off with a couple. We got a couple properties. One, because 2023, 24 sounds like there's going to be some construction on the strip area. First one's the dream. And uh, my prediction is the dream will continue on schedule. Investment. Uh, group looks has like it has a good uh, continued um, track record. There's good money funding. They got through the FAA regulations. That was a big holdup. And again, they're projecting to be open in the third quarter of 2024. Many will include gaming, nightlife, dining, your typical resorts. Although this is kind of a shift from the mega resort. It's kind of with 1200 square foot. Um, 
service spa and fitness center. It's kind of getting away from that mega resort and kind of going back to like some of the older um resorts. It's really nice looking. Um, and I'm glad to see that they're doing some stuff on the south end of the strip. So hope that this continues um, and that this gets going by 2023, 24. Alna Arena is my next one. I'm, uh, or they even, some people were calling it the net zero because I've seen some comments because there's zero chance it gets built. The Alna Arena, as you know, is that arena slash hotel, no casino. And it's kind of been next to Fountain Blue, and those two have been eyesores because nothing's happened to that area. Um, I've seen now that basically Clark County, the gaming and Nevada Gaming has basically said, you need to either start building or you need to sell and get out of there. Um, so what the investors did was they announced the project. They slowly started cracking ground. They've removed debris. But really, that's it. And if you watched my episode last week, this sounds like, you know, a lot of what was going on with Ferris Kingdom was a lot of promises, a lot. Oh, yeah, we're on schedule. We're on schedule. But where are the investors? Um, they claim to have all these investors, but nothing's been substantial. And it just seems like they keep just kicking the can down the road. So uh, my projection is in 2023. And they'll see finally, hey, sorry, nothing's going on here. We're out. Next one, um, and I read this recently in a um, tourism stuff, uh, a couple articles on the tourism trends for 2023, and a lot of them were projecting that, you know, not going to be a lot because of the economy. I'm going to say that Vegas bucks the tourism train. Um, you know, this came out from, I saw another one from UNLV that projects volume, gaming revenue, and ca capacity will level out in 23 and even post declines going into 24 um but some of these studies don't count like conventions super bowl coming in 24 um even f1 racing that they're having i think that's gonna bring in a lot of uh, tourism vegas and, and another reason is vegas bucked the trend during COVID, during the lockdowns people weren't traveling as much and vegas was doing well i mean not as well as it normally does like it is now but it was doing well and my whole thing, and I heard this from a couple people that work in the casino industry out there, Vegas always will adjust the market to survive. And that's true. I, I think personally, we're going to see um, either if it does flatten out, I still think we're going to be high above the national international numbers in tourism. So I'm going to check that and see what it says, but I think they're going to buck that trend. Um I think that this year there's going to be at least one property. I know Tillman Fertitta has started that place there where the wine market um old harley davidson that little shop there north of um mgm and before you get the plant hollywood he's kind of put a uh um a property there of around 43 stories uh over 20 about 2500 rooms um gaming restaurant dining um and you know he's issued demolition permits things are starting to get teared down specs look like a really nice place and i think this is uh tim fakita's uh grand open uh grand opus you know he won he has all these station casinos you know he wants to build a big one so let's see what he does here um i think this is going to really boost that city center strip and I'm curious to see what it does. And so then two more, well, actually three more. Fountain Blue will open on time. As you guys saw, they got the funding. Here this week, it was announced they got, I think, two billion or whatever, a couple billion to finish the project. They're saying it's going to open by the fourth quarter of this year. Um, when I was out there, there was continuous construction, more than I saw in the previous years combined. Um, all signs are reported to being on schedule, and it's going to be a major boost for the north end of the strip. And I'm finally excited to see it. And and you know maybe you know we'll see it. You know it was finally the the gem that was worth waiting for. I'm not holding my breath on that comment. I think it's going to be a very nice kind of resorts world. Maybe not sterile. Mixed with a little bit of the wind. Mixed with a little bit of the cosmo. We'll see. We'll see. One or more iconic strips will strip properties will announce change of hands this year. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to go with my three projected places are Tropicana, Flamingo, and this is a weird one because it does really well is the link. I, I think they're some, I think Caesars is not done selling properties. Um, I think one of these, and I think I know Tropicana, I believe if, if somebody knows where they just bought by Bally's again, so maybe that's going to become Bally's, but, um, I don't know if that deal went through yet. I think right now with the, the economy, I think some of these properties are looking to consolidate. And, and so I think one of these now, whether or not that means that they're going to go away, that I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you're going to see some more business dealings. I think this year you're going to see a lot of business like stuff like we have the last two years. So those are my three. We'll see if I'm right. Um, so my last one, projections on Vegas trips for over under for 2023. Um, I'm going to go with one this year. And the reason is, uh, my 2023 is looking really busy this year. I'm back to work. Um, like I was prior to COVID before I started this podcast, which is great. Um, but it makes my, you know, freedom to travel a little bit tougher. So, um, you're looking at either fall or maybe a late winter trip this year. Um, I'll see. And if I go, it's only going to be. Jay and I might only go for a couple of days. I have a couple of friends that want me to go out with them. So we'll see. But uh, if I do, you know, you guys are going to be the first to hear about it. And there's going to be some trip reviews. So how did I do uh, this year with uh, my projections? I thought I did pretty well, much better than I did the year before. Um, if I go back here and look, I had, um, let's see, one. Uh two three four out of the six and i think last year i was hitting like 40 percent. so that was a pretty good year um and so that's it for this uh quick episode i wish everybody a happy and safe new year and uh we'll see you in 2023 but before we go um let me know what your favorite memories of 2022 las vegas if you got out what you enjoyed and uh, if you enjoyed the show, hit like, make sure you click subscribe. Love to hear from you. And then uh, again, interact with me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. My links are in the description below. And we'll see you in 2023 for an all new episode of Talking Vegas with me, K.A.